As I mentioned earlier, there are different exhibitions in this exhibition. In this room, we are in the sculpture exhibition. It's quite an amazing gathering of sculpture in style and technique that almost cover every kind of experimentation the artist attempted or embraced. You know, if you enter the Met, for instance, or the Louvre of many encyclopedic museums in the world, you often have this kind of hall of sculpture where sculptures of many different eras, style, tradition are in dialogue with each other. So you can have a Greek a kouros with a baroque sculpture, uh, an Egyptian sarcophagus with a Rodin portrait, with this idea of showing the universality, the diversity, all the possibilities of sculpture. Here, with a bit of humor, it is what the artists have done. You are in a hall of sculpture with this incredible inventory of work that not only cover what they are able to do in sculpture, but also plays on the history of sculpture and what that sculpture represents. From the most classical idea of what a sculpture can be, to the most primitive, to the most modernist one. In terms of the convention of sculpture, there is no more traditional or conventional or official as a sculpture than a horse on a pedestal, usually with someone on the horse, like a king, a soldier, some nobility. Usually they are placed in the middle of a location, a symbolic location in a city, you know, at the center of a town on a plaza. But it's always the same model. You have a pedestal, a horse, and then what we're here to celebrate. So here you have a bit of that. We have had the, the, maybe the most dominating sculpture in this hall of sculpture with the horse, which is placed high up on the pedestal. But it's a horse that doesn't celebrate much beside sculpture, beside being a sculpture. It's missing the character, it's missing the protagonist, he fell, he fell or she fell of the horse. The horse itself uh, doesn't look like uh, a glorious horse, battlefield horse, even though it's made out of bronze, which is the, the absolute definitive material for sculpture. It looks like it's made out of piece of paper, paper cut, uh, origami, folded paper. So by playing this game, by using this contradiction, Bushma and Paiva are actually questioning what, um, what sculpture is. They're even pushing it more because the horse is actually seemingly active, They're lifting the legs. It's actually, when they talk about it, they signal that it's a horse with two people inside. Uh, like you could find in a carnival where two people wear a horse costume and they start walking around. And if you look carefully, you could even almost perceive that uh, there is a knee sticking out of the folding legs. So the monumentality here is actually quite humorous. And you find it in other, in other places in this hall of sculpture. Here you have this sculpture called uh, It Tickles where uh, maybe that the, the legs of the horseman that fell off the horse moving is uh, or her, her toes. You also have a kind of a response to this horse and the monumentality of this horse across from the horse directly with something which looks like the opposite of what could be a sculpture of, or the subject matter for a sculpture, a stingray fish. Stingray fish is a flat fish. Sculpture is not flat. Sculpture is volume. Sculpture is volume that you're supposed to move around, round bus. Uh, it's about how an object with volume plays in the space. Here, you have the opposite. You have this flat fish turned into a vertical sculpture.
it's almost a drawing. And it's also something that the, both artists are playing with. The way they, they, they imagine or they embrace sculpture, they want it deliberately to be very, quote-unquote, primitive, archaic, direct, as if they were trying to reinvent sculpture. There is almost no virtuosity in this sculpture. You have the feeling that they took a piece of paper, they drew a shape on it, like the, a, sitting, a stingray fish, and then they turn it into this bronze object. And that's actually the way they work. They use the technique of lost wax, which is a very, very ancient, also primitive way of making sculpture by evacuating the burning wax out of a mold in order to keep the molding, uh, the burning, the boiling bronze out, outside, of the, uh, outside of the cast. Uh, but it's this idea that the sculpture could be made out of very direct, simple, quick uh, drawing uh, gestures. Actually, there is even in the room a work which is almost the explanation. It's an horizontal sculpture where you see what used to be a sheet of, of wax, because they work with this, this flat sheet of wax that they can cut, turn, fold, break, roll, where you see almost the progression of how the sculptural gestures are working with piece of the wax, now bronze, lifting, 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 rolling and becoming a croissant. And there again, the sculpture, like the stingray fish, is the opposite of monumental. It's a croissant. It's for breakfast. It's not for museum. So if you look at the exhibition in general, you will see that besides the humor in this sculpture hall, uh, there is also an acute awareness of uh, the history of sculpture. As I mentioned, there is a monument next to me, but there are also some style of sculpture that are here quoted by the artist. If we stay in the, in the horse world, there is here next to, uh, next to you, actually, the head of a horse, almost a cubist head of a horse that in many ways can uh, evoke the notion or object or sculpture that could have been made at the, the early 20th century by, for instance, uh, the French sculpture Duchamp Villon. There is also another aspect of the work that is very present here, is that connect to the film, and that's part of the complexity of their work, is that no images is innocent. And that may be what they are trying to do when they unfold this attempt to reinvent cinema, reinvent sculpture. That all images have a background, all images have a source. For instance, in their work, some sculpture appear first in film, on them are sculpture and become film. For instance, this sculpture here, leaking clepsydra, is actually a moving object, or it's time frozen, and it's time in many ways. First, it's lifted directly from a film by Gushmo and Paiva called The Ventrilochist, where you see a clepsydra, which is this, this amphora, this bucket, that was used to measure time because water was leaking out of it. And the pace of the water leaking out of the amphora was a way to, uh, to measure time. So you have it here, but it's frozen, as if the bronze sculpture made, again, in a very rudimentary way, was actually a photography of this image that is coming out of a film that the artists have done. You have another one here that is related to this notion of passage of time, which is pressure cooker, where you can see this pressure cooker, again, very rudimentary, but this notion of time compressed, which is just suggested here by the steam coming out of the cooker. And you have few objects, few sculptures like that in this exhibition. For instance, you have a bathtub, which is this black bathtub made again with the same technique of lost wax, very rudimentary sculpture. And the water is suggested by this horizontal plaque of cover, I would say, of the bathtub. 
that is the, the surface of the water, but then you see something, bubbles, bronze bubble, uh, that suggests that actually underwater there is a body, and the body is making bubble like uh, with the mouth, and the bubbles are coming out of the surface, uh, and it just frozen in time. So there is this also almost this contradiction in their work that the fixed object can capture time. And if we go back, I was mentioning Duchamp Villon with the, 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 the head of the horse, but it's also, you can go back to time and pull a string from this experiment to many directions in art history. One could be some early 20th century, the futurists in Italy were trying to capture time through uh, sculpture and painting. But I think more interestingly, in the case of Gushmo and Paiva, they almost go back to the, the, the beginning of photography, or between photography and film, with this notion of chronophotography that was the technique used by the photographer Muybridge to actually capture movement frame by frame. Running horses, or a woman going to bed, and actually there is a film in this exhibition with actually almost the re-rendering of a woman going to bed, which is again directly lifted from this history of image making between photography and cinema. You have also, again very humorously, in the, in the case of this artist, you have something that you never see, or I've never seen in the history of sculpture, is a movement of a ping pong ball bouncing around, made out of bronze. So again, that's something that should be a film or that should be a sound, but here is represented in bronze. 